What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the M3 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. I have already tested the entry model and we'll leave that link down below in this video's description. And if you'd like to see how these MacBooks compare to the Max Spec MacBook Pro, then be sure to subscribe clicking the bell icon to be one of the first 5,000 people to be notified of when that video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first things first, the model that I'm testing in today's video is the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which has the M3 Pro chip, which has a 12 core CPU, an 18 core GPU, 18 gigabytes of unified memory, along with one terabyte of SSD based storage. So the first benchmarking application, which I ran on this MacBook Pro was Geekbench 4, which was ran through Rosetta as it's not natively available on Mac OS. Now Geekbench is good as it runs several different tests and algorithms and depending Depending on how it's performed and how long it took to perform them, it will then give a score accordingly. So for the CPU test, I got a single core score of 7,862 with a multi-core score of 45,003. I also performed Geekbench 4's compute tests testing the GPU found in the M3 Pro chip. Now it's worth noting that with this MacBook Pro, it has 18 graphical cores and not 14 like we see in the entry 14 inch model. So the first compute test which I ran was the OpenCL test. Now when running this test, I got a score of 196,172. And when running the Metal compute test, I got a score of 148,898. The next testing application which I ran was once again from Geekbench, but this time from their slightly newer version, Geekbench 5, which has an increased amount of tests, which are further designed to tax the machine when compared to Geekbench 4. And once again, Geekbench 5 scores based on performance and time taken. So when running the CPU test, I got a single core score of 1,691 with a multi-core score of 11,677. And when running the OpenCL compute test, I got scores of 47,671. And when running the Metal test, I got scores of 47,917. The next testing application which I ran on this MacBook Pro was once again from Geekbench, however from their latest set of tests found in Geekbench 6. And when running the Geekbench 6 compute test, I got single core scores of 3141 with multi-core scores of 15712. And when running the OpenCL compute test, I got scores of 50,207. And when running the metal test, I got scores of 78,588. The next test which I ran was Cinebench R20. Now when running this test, I got a score of 4,103. And so sticking to the trend of testing the CPU, I then ran Cinebench R23. Now Cinebench will test the single and multi-core performance of the M3 Pro CPU, and then works out the ratio between the two. The higher the ratio, the better the performing CPU. So when running Cinebench R23, I got single core scores of 1920 with multi-core scores of 15092, which gives us a ratio of 7.86. The next testing application which I ran on this MacBook Pro was Cinebench 2024. Now this version of Cinebench runs very similarly to Cinebench R23 with it testing the single and multi-core performance and then working out the ratio. Once again, the higher the ratio, the better the performing CPU. So for this test, I got a single core score of 140 with a multi-core score of 1054, which gives us a ratio of 7.55. I also ran the GPU test from Cinebench 2024 and got scores of 5027. And so after running the GPU test from Cinebench 2024, I wanted to further test this GPU's performance. So I ran a number of different tests from 3 d Mark. Now starting off with the wildlife test, it was useless. It basically maxed out this test with it coming in with a maxed out score with an average frame rate of 120 frames per second. And so when it comes to running the wildlife stress test, the best score that I achieved was 20,040, with the lowest score being 20,035, which really shows that this MacBook Pro is being cooled very well and keeps its performance quite stable. 
and so I wanted to further test this machine so I ran the wildlife extreme test and when running this test I got a score of 14,303 with an average frame rate of 85.6 frames per second. And when running the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, the best score I achieved was 14,323 and the lowest I achieved was 14,259. Which once again goes to show that this MacBook Pro is being cooled quite well. And one of the newest hardware features that the M3 family of chips bring to the new MacBook Pros is hardware accelerated ray tracing. So I decided to run the Solar Bay test. Now when running the Solar Bay test to test the ray tracing capabilities of this M3 Pro MacBook Pro, I got a score of 22,467 with an average frame rate of 85.4 frames per second. And when running the Solar Bay stress test, the best score I achieved was 22,000 472 whilst the lowest was 22,410 which once again is showing that this MacBook Pro is being cooled very well. I then ran GFX Bench Metal. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests both on and off screen which vary from higher and lower levels of intensity. Now in the interest of saving some time I have calculated the average across both categories but as always I will show you each individual result. So the average I got for the higher intensity intensive tasks was 391.89 frames per second and for the lower I got a score of 381.29 frames per second. I then wanted to test this MacBook's SSD speeds so I ran the Blackmagic disk speed test and when testing the write performance I got speeds of 6262.9 megabytes per second with read speeds of 5045.6 megabytes per second. So I also wanted to test using the AJ disk speed test and when running this test I got write speeds of 3773 megabytes per second with read speeds of 2612 megabytes Megabytes per second. I then ran NovaBench 2. Now NovaBench is a good general benchmark as it tests not only the CPU and GPU but also the system memory and the system storage. So when running this test I got scores of 2974. I then ran a network speed test and got download speeds of 313 megabits per second with upload speeds of 93.4 megabits per second. The next test I ran was the Antutu HTML browser benchmark and when running this test I got scores of 93,008 and when running the speedometer 2.0 test the highest scores I achieved was 604. I then ran the V-Ray test and got scores of 9,577. I then used Blender to render the classroom and BMW scenes. And when rendering the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 7 minutes and 15 seconds to render. But when it came to using the GPU, it was much faster, with it taking 1 minute and 19 seconds to render. I then changed the scene from the classroom to the BMW scene. And when using the CPU to render this scene, it took 3 minutes and 5 seconds to render. And when it came to using the GPU, it was astonishingly fast, with it taking 33 seconds to render. I then rendered using Blender 4.0, which takes advantage of the ray tracing acceleration in the M3 Pro. And when rendering the classroom scene using the CPU through Blender 4.0, it took 5 minutes and 30 seconds to render using the CPU. And when switching over to using the GPU, it took 55 seconds to render. When rendering the BMW scene using the CPU, it rendered in 2 minutes and 24 seconds. But when using the GPU, it was astonishingly fast. It rendered in 21 seconds. I then ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark across a number of different resolutions from high to medium settings. So when running this benchmark at the native resolution of the 14 inch MacBook Pro which is 3024 by 1964 and keeping the graphic settings to high this MacBook Pro managed to render 4479 frames with it averaging 28 frames per second. When dropping the settings to medium, it this time managed to render 4,617 frames, with it bumping its average up by a measly 1 frames per second, this time averaging 29 frames per second. When the resolution was lowered to 2560 by 1600 and keeping the graphic settings to high, it this time rendered 6,071 frames, with it averaging 38 frames per second. And when the graphic settings was lowered to medium settings, it this time rendered 6,280 
87 frames, with it once again increasing its average frame rate by a measly 1 frames per second, now averaging 39 frames per second. When the resolution was lowered further to 1920 by 1200 and keeping the graphic settings to high, it this time rendered 9293 frames, with it averaging 59 frames per second. When those graphic settings were lowered once again to medium settings, it managed to render 9667 frames, with it increasing its average now by 2 frames per second, now averaging 61 frames per second. I lowered the resolution one final time to 1200 by 854 and keeping the graphic settings to high, it this time managed to render 14,466 frames with it now averaging 92 frames per second. And when the graphic settings was lowered to medium, it this time rendered 15,289 frames, with it now averaging 97 frames per second. I then performed a timed video export using Final Cut Pro with background rendering turned off, exporting both a full HD and 4K video project to H.264. It's worth noting that this project has a length of 5 minutes and 23 seconds. So when exporting the full HD project that's 1920 by 1080, it managed to export it in 40 seconds and when exporting the 4k project that's 3840 by 2160 it managed this time to export this project in 2 minutes and 33 seconds and so the last series of tests which I ran on this MacBook Pro come from Unigen benchmarking tools. And when running the Heaven benchmark at 1515 by 982, it managed to score 3636 with an average frame rate of 144.3 frames per second. And when the resolution was lowered to 1440 by 900, it this time scored 3773, with it scoring an average frame rate of 149.8 frames per second. And the final test which I ran once again came from Unigen benchmarking tools, but this time it was their Valley test. Now when running the Valley test at 1515 by 982, it managed to score 4908, with it scoring an average frame rate of 117 point three frames per second. I also ran the valley test at 1440 by 900 and it this time scored 4858 with it scoring an average frame rate of 116.1 frames per second. So that has been it for today's video. Of course, if you are new around here, then be sure to subscribe clicking the bell icon to be notified when a new video goes live. If you've got any questions with anything you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media. Links to which can be found down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.